Money. Today, I thought I would stick in my own arena, mortgages, and talk about PMI, or private mortgage insurance removal. Uh, mentioned in earlier shows, I've talked about uh, the different ways to get around paying mortgage insurance or monthly mortgage insurance, but I want to talk to you about how to remove monthly mortgage insurance if you choose that option. Uh, there's also mortgage insurance, for those of you that don't know, I've brought into previous shows that it is now a uh, tax benefit. So you can write off, if your gross income is $100,000 you get to write, or less, you can write off 100% of the premiums. For homeowners with adjusted gross income from 100000 one to 110000 Deductions are phased at 10% increments for each additional $1,000 of adjusted gross household income. So it's really great that that was brought back in. Um, now, today, again, I'm going to talk about the PMI or MI, when that can be removed. Now, it depends on the loan. And if you remove mortgage insurance, the mortgage insurance P- premium, MIP, is for FHA financing and is required for the life of the loan. So if you're using government financing through FHA, you have to pay the mortgage for the life of, mortgage insurance for the life of the loan. Now, I've had clients ask me, well, should I just go ahead and wait until I qualify for a conventional or wait until I have a down payment for a conventional um, so that I don't have to have that monthly mortgage insurance for the life of the loan? And my answer would be no. And the reason why is because if you wait, you're going to have access to the same financing that if you bought now, took advantage of this market, see the appreciation, and then just refinance when you're in a position to get that conventional loan. So during that period of time, you're still getting the potential equity, the tax write-off, and all those other good things of homeownership. So get into whatever financing you can and and then turn around and refinance into conventional, and then you can look at the options to remove mortgage insurance at that time. Now, conventional financing is private mortgage insurance known as PMI. So we're going to talk about how that gets removed. Now, the Homeowners Protection Act law governs when mortgage lenders can and must remove private mortgage insurance for a home loan. So lender's mortgage insurance, also known as the private mortgage insurance, is insurance payable to the lender for the trustee of a pool of securities that may require um, when they're taking out the mortgage loan. It's an insurance to offset the losses in case a consumer is not able to repay the loan and the lender is not able to recover its cost from foreclosure and sale of the mortgaged property. Now, PMI is required on a conventional loan with less than 20% down. So let's talk about the options of removal. First, we have automatic PMI termination. Once your loan to value is based on the original price you paid for the home is at 78%, the PMI will automatically terminate if the mortgage payments are up to date. Now, if you want to request PMI removal, you can request removal of PMI when the loan balance reaches 80% of the original home's value at the time you secured the loan. Now, PMI disclosure will be part of the disclosure package and list the dates when when you're going to hit that 80% mark. Extra principal payments during that time can shorten the time to reach that 80%. To have the PMI removed, you must be current on your mortgage payments and request the PMI removal in writing. The lender may require you to prove that there is not a second loan on the home, and you may also be um, have to pay for an appraisal to show that the home value has not decreased. Now, this is an extra 2% in the loan to value from 80% to 78%. Again, the 78% is when it automatically terminates. So you're not going in for any request to have it removed. At 80%, you can do that. But if we look at the extra money out of your pocket to mark your calendar for when it hits that 80% loan to value from the original price that you paid on the property on a $100,000 loan with an estimate of 0.78% calculation for the cost of mortgage insurance, this would be an additional 65 dollars a month, you would pay from the time you reached 80% loan to value to the time that it automatically drops off at the 78% loan to value. So based on today's interest rates, um, maybe you'd be looking at 80% target, about a year of cost. So there'd be $700 that you'd miss out on that opportunity. So again, just understanding how the removal of PMI or private mortgage insurance works can help save you some money. Now, alternative termination criteria. The Homeowners Protection Act dictates that PMI can stay on the loan for no longer than one half of the term of the loan, even if the loan to value is greater than 78% when half the term has passed. So the lender must remove the mortgage insurance. This is final termination of PMI might occur with mortgage terms that are interest-only payments, uh, negative M loans, uh, if your value 
drops dramatically, uh, then that would be an opportunity to where the alternative termination criteria might kick into place. Now, the most popular options for re- releasing the PMI because of the appreciation in your property is request early PMI removal. So you can request early removal of PMI when the loan reaches 80% again of the home's current market value. So in addition, you must have a minimum history of making mortgage payments on the loan. With most lenders, that's going to be anywhere from 24 to 36 months. So to have the PMI removed early, you must be current on your mortgage payments and request the PMI removal in writing. The lender may require you to, again, prove that there's no second mortgage on the home, and definitely you're going to be paying for an appraisal because you've got to show that that value has increased to hit that 80% loan to value based on the current market. Now, again, there are always ways to avoid paying PMI with less than 20% down or avoid paying the monthly PMI. Um, If you listen to the show on a regular basis, you know I'm all about the buyout of the mortgage insurance. It's an opportunity for you to pay an upfront fee fee to eliminate paying that monthly mortgage insurance. Depending on your credit scores, different qualifying factors is going to determine what that cost is. But normally, the cost to buy out the mortgage insurance, one-time fee upfront at closing, is going to, you're going to have that paid off in a shorter period of time than the minimum requirement of that two to three years, you're going to have to hold on to it, assuming you get the appreciation to hit the 80% loan to value. Now, if you don't have that additional cash uh, to pay it up front, you can also, depending on qualifying, just finance it into the loan. So that's pretty cool option. Again, when you look at the numbers, that's why I love mortgages so much, because it's all about the numbers. Um, Again, those of you that are regular listeners to the show, I do own a mortgage software. It's all about education. And when you look at the analysis, it's really easy to see. You just look for red or green. Green means you're in the positive. Red means you're in the negative. And it really helps to make a decision on the best loan program for you. Uh, There's also lender paid mortgage insurance where you're going to take a higher interest straight for the life of the loan to avoid the buyout of the mortgage insurance and avoid the monthly. Not one of my favorite options unless you're going to keep the property very short term. So that is my money chat for you today. Coming up next on the money hour, are you getting ready to sell your home? How do you prepare your home for sale from start to finish? Well, that's what Kim Frazier is here with me to talk about from John L. Scott right here at 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. 